Hi you guys, this is going to be the Design Assignments production movie. That's what I'm going to call it because I want it to be a movie that you understand a couple of things. First, I want to show you that this is just, um, and that one of the um, students in a prior class had this image and I showed him how to do a few things with it. So I'm going to turn off the top image and you're going to see exactly what I've done with the image just to turn it into a bit of an ad, okay? And I wanted you to see that this ad was 12 by 7. So when I said that the size and the orientation is up to you, um, I was totally honest with that, and you can determine how you want it to be. I want you to notice the margins. I want you to notice the balance, the movement in this. And I'm going to show you a couple of neat things. Um, I'm going to turn on the guides just so you can see how the guides line everything up and how I have um, left-hand flush stuff going on here. This isn't about kerning and tracking and this isn't about margins and this isn't about anything but movement and balance and production. Um, and I want to make a point about something, okay? When you are into the stage of design, now I am going to actually turn this Photoshop file into a PDF file where the text remains vector. Again, I'm going to say, I'm going to turn it into when I'm finished with this little demo where the text can remain vector, which is extremely important and has only been capable in Photoshop since the CC version and I believe CS6 had it. But, and here's the big but, you all know that when you do an ad, the ad is supposed to be finished and executed in Adobe InDesign. I understand that and I would um, advise anyone in the class who is going to go through the set of ads to actually create your Photoshop backgrounds to create the ad in Photoshop but use it as a template so that you can bring it into InDesign in a series of layers and recreate it in InDesign so that you can export the PDF out of InDesign. I, however, am not going to do that and for the sake of um, expediency, I'm going to show you, even though it should never be done and executed in an agency manner in Adobe Photoshop, Photoshop does retain vector capability when you do one special thing to text. It's something you should know about, but you should also know the proper, uh, this called the proper tools for the proper job, and in this case design and execution of finished design should be in Adobe InDesign. But regardless of that, let's go on with this, okay? Um, I wanted to show you again that this was the ad that I started with and there's a couple of things I just want to show you about the displacement and the movement of this liquid power um, that I had back here. I want to show you the liquid power movement on the text that I had and I want to recreate it for you and I also want to recreate the, the quick displacement. Um, I have a stroke background to show you how I brought in a little stroke from the top and I moved it around the three sides and how the balance is really nice all the way around and how I cropped him off on the bottom. It wasn't necessary to keep all of his image. And I want to show you that this was the original image that I had back here. And I want to show you how to displace an image with the displacement maps that are available in the resources drive 2300 folder. Just bring the folder over to your machine called displacement maps. I will show you um, where that is. If I can bring this over here and just go backwards and show you where the displacement maps are. I'm going to go back one more and I brought over these displacement maps which I'm showing you right here from the server. They're just a series of files that you can use to displace edges. So what I want to do is throw that back on the other screen and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to displace this image. You take um, that layer that you're going to displace, of course make a duplicate copy of it so you don't ever ruin an original, okay? I've already done that. And I'm going to only expose the edge that I want to displace with a marquee. You can see I've only exposed this much of that edge with the marquee between here and here, okay? Now I'm going to go add a feather to it, which is Shift F6, and I'm going to add a 5 pixel feather so that it doesn't displace it really harshly. But remember, the rest of this image is protected. I'm only allowing this much to displace. So I go to Filter. Um, oops, I have to click on the right layer, of course. Filter, Distort, Displace. And I chose 20 and 20% 20 to displace. The less it is here, 
in this box, the less you will displace. The more, the more you will displace. And you have to go back and forth to get and feel what's right for you. But I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to go right into the Displacement Maps folder. And I chose to use Cracked and Peeled Paint. I'll explain a little bit about what Displacement does. Where black is inside this, where black is inside this image, it displaces the edge completely. Where white is inside this image, it doesn't displace it at all. So obviously where gray is inside this image, um, it is only going to displace it. Um, whatever percentage the gray is, is whatever percentage the pixel is displaced. So that's how displacement works, black and white. Remember, I've always said black and white to Photoshop means everything. So I'm going to say OK, and suddenly you can see how I've displaced this image. And it's something that is so arbitrary and random, you could never do it by yourself. This is, I'm going to Command Z back because I really didn't need that one done because I already did it. This is the displaced version. But why I did this one wasn't just to do the displaced version. Um, I'm also going to show you how to take and add a little movement to the liquid power. So, and then after that, we're going to actually save this out in the proper manner as a PDF retaining vector on the text, which is what I wanted you to see in the first place. But I'm going to take the liquid power here, and I'm going to show you that um, I've applied a drop shadow to it. But I'm going to duplicate the liquid power layer, and I'm going to, I always throw it away, <laughs> and I'm going to turn off, I'm going to put it underneath the main one, turn off the main one, and now the one that I'm turning on and off, I want to get rid of the drop shadow. So I'm going to take the drop shadow and put it into the trash. I'm now going to right hand click and turn it into a rasterized set of pixels. Now it's no longer text. You can tell there's no longer a T right there. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to add a filter of blur and motion blur to it. And then I'm going to displace the motion blur a lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to say OK on it and I wanted to, oh, <laughs> the reason why, I just did a no-no. Remember this box I told you about over here, the marquee box? Well, I didn't command D the marquee box, so I couldn't blur something that wasn't available to be blurred. I'm glad I did that mistake on screen because it happens all the time. Now I'm going to go back into the filter. I'm going to blur. Now what the blur filter can see, the motion blur filter can now see the liquid power as you can see what it's doing there. And I'm going to take it like this and I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to turn on the top one and you can see that if I hit Command T on this and move this over and get closer, I can actually stretch out the liquid power and move it over so it gives me just a little bit more finesse and even move it out a little farther. And now take it in like this and you can see that kind of looks neat and now I can add a layer mask to it and um, kind of kill the area that's over his head. So if I take this um, layer that I'm turning off and on and add a layer mask to it and I paint in black and white on the layer mask, I'm now going to make the brush bigger. I'm going to make me paint at 10% on the flow and I'm painting in black so it should be reducing the amount of pixels that are showing up on the screen. So now I'm minimizing where the liquid went into his head. I think that looks good. But now I want to just kind of minimize it over here and let this kind of just vignette away. In fact, I'll probably do it a little bit more everywhere and I could also just take a little opacity away from that layer just to add a little bit of movement on that liquid power lettering so it it he's flowing in the wind and I'd like the lettering to look like it's got movement on it as well and I think it does. So what I need to do now is to show you if after I hit save on the file I'm going to save as to another version. So I'm going to go Liquid Add Pro number two. Then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit the F key. And please ignore how messy my desktop is. I really don't want to get yelled at by you. But I'm going to move it down like this so we can um, get to the folder that I need to get to, which I hope I actually kept here. Let me go into my 2300 folder so I can show you where the thing is going to save to very quickly in main and in design assignment. I have this right down here in these GoPro ads right here where Jordan's stuff is right there. So let me put this up in the corner. It's where it should be saving in a minute. Now, 
what I want you to do is to put all the text layers on top. Okay, that's very, very important. I'm now, since I've saved it as a number two add, I can throw away this original file. I can take all of these layers and not flatten them, but merge them. Anything that was an image, I am going to hit Command E to merge. Now, after I've done that, these two text layers remain vector. So I'm going to hit Command S to save the file. Remember, this is not my original. I've already saved as. Now I'm going to go to Save As, and I'm going to save it out as a PDF. And I'm going to tell the PDF file not to retain Photoshop editing capability. I repeat, not to retain Photoshop editing capability. And I'm going to leave everything the way it comes out naturally and just hit Save File. Now, let's go find the file and let's go find the PDF. Okay, so, um, okay, so let's just not save that PDF. And now I have the GoPro Add PDF, which I'm going to show you by getting close to it, that it did retain, here's the PDF right here, it's 2.8 megabytes. Now I've opened up the PDF in Acrobat, obviously, and I'm going to zoom into the body text so you can see that no matter how close I get, that is going to remain vector the entire time, which is extremely important. Do not turn in your ads unless you are turning them in in vector. Now, to reduce the file size of this in Acrobat, I want you to see that in Acrobat, I am going to go to File, Save as Other, Reduced File Size PDF. Right over here in the corner, you can see it's currently 2.8 megabytes. I'm going to save it out as an Acrobat 4.0 or later and say OK and say Save and hit Replace. And now it should actually flatten everything and what was 2.8 megabytes may I tell you is 667 K and it hasn't lost any of its vector capability nor has it lost any of its impact so that is the way I want you to save out your files okay that's very very important very important now one of the other things I'm going to end with is I'm going to open up the PSD file uh, not the one that was that one. I'm sorry. I'm going to open up the other one with all the layers because I have it. Now, when you're ready for the second ad, and this is very important, in production you have finished your first ad. You want everything to line up, correct? So, save as, call it your GoPro ad B or C or whatever you want to call it. So, I'm going to say second ad. And now, that would be my first ad. Remember, you have to create three. Now is the time that you could actually switch out this bottom image. You could switch out any other image you want, and you have everything in place. It's already formatted correctly. It's already got all of the margins the way you want. Now go get your new visuals and put them in there. Okay, that's that simple. So um, I'm going to put this in my online design um, Sorial Illustrations tutorial uh, file for the design assignment and I'm also going to put it in Canvas. Thank you very much.